Hey, everybody. So in case you didn't see, Cubase 10 is out. I don't use Cubase, but for those of you who are production people, cool. Always fun to see a new version. I was looking through it. It's So I think it's interesting because I feel like Cubase's MIDI editing is still obviously better than Logic's. And I say this as like a Logic only person. Like I only compose in Logic. Uh, well, I mean, I only use Logic as a as my DAW. Um, but I just think it's interesting that they seem to me now chasing Logic, which is weird. So, I mean, Vera Audio is their own thing. That's 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 something that's kind of unique to Cubase. The audio alignment, eh, you know, cool feature, but uh, the channel strips, uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, but this, how is this not just like drum designer? This is drum designer to me, uh, which is fine. I'm glad it's getting it, um, but I don't find drum designer that good. So I don't know if this is the feature you really want to chase, guys. So... Um, this is cool. Uh, I just said this in the Composing Made Simple Discord, but you know what I think is interesting? Every time you see like an output video about their desk, and you've got this with this, um, or sometimes you see people using like a, a new sample engine or something, they have so many plants in their studios. I have no plants in this room. Not a single one. I need to get some plants. <laughs> uh, anyway, this looks really cool. If you're a Cubase person, give it a look-see. Uh, Steinberg is a good company. I think Steinberg is excellent. Um, the more of you who buy Cubase, the more likely that Dorico will still be alive soon, <laughs> in five years. So please go buy Cubase. Um, I was what I was hoping to see in that Cubase ten thing was uh, Dorico integration, where Dorico is you know you own both, and somehow Dorico and Cubase actually talk to each other in a way that you know engraving and DAWs haven't in a while or haven't ever. Because uh, I feel like they're like this close that they could just get those two softwares to talk to each other. It'd be good. All right. Well, we are going to do about a two-hour stream today. It's about 9 o'clock my time. I have an appointment at 1230 to be shorn on my head. So uh, I will have to end a little bit early. So I'll probably end around 11 my time. So a little bit of a short stream today. We started this... Back on 11.07, so on November 7th, which was a week ago. So let's see if this is still sounding good to us. The sample server is freaking out. Give me a second. There we go. Should be better now. I don't like this. I didn't like this when we wrote it. I remember not liking it. This Telecaster, I'm going to get rid of too. I'm souring on the Telecaster. And here we're going to do something cool. We're going to go to five. So we have this little introduction. And let me set up the correct key signature at the beginning. Let me just see what this is. Nope, definitely spam. Key is E major. Yeah, okay, so now we're gonna go. So we've got this sort of... What if we did like, what if we were like... A little 
too much harmonic with that subtonic there. Let's uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's do something at five. it should be related to this yeah I like that that's good bum bum What does that sound like when it transitions out of this? So we're going to have to listen to this opening. Well, no, we don't. We'll just split this and let it start again. Okay, so we need a consequent phrase. So our main phrase is... that too much late lately let's not let's not go one six three to four so we just went something unexpected a little bit here something just slightly less So that should be two nice that should be a nice little antecedent consequent phrase pair. Let's see. I think maybe one of these arcades um maybe sounding a D sharp. It's a little loud too. Thank you. 
So uh, this arcade loopy thingy is definitely thinking of itself being in two or four. I know it's just kind of ambiences, but it's causing some of the notes to land and sound off. So let's what, see what happens. Sometimes you can take a loop, and it's in four, but if you're smart about the way that you re-articulate the, um, the, the loop, um, so like basically playing the note that starts it and then playing it again, um, sometimes you can make it sort of force it into a five or a seven. See, that's fine. Yeah, but I think we have to change this then. Like maybe there? It's still I still want that sax saxophone sound. Is this the one that does it? I feel like I shouldn't be hearing that. Oh, it's in three. Ah, it's in three. This is what needs to change. Where is it coming from then? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so right now we're feeling this five as three and two. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. A cool thing that Rachmaninoff does in a piece called Isle of the Dead, which is also in five, I believe it's actually in five, four, two, um, <clears throat> as well, five, four, as well, is he, it's, it's in minor. It's in five, so one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. It switches to major at some point, to more a more major bass tonality. And in concert with that, it changes to one, two, one, two, three, four. So it, it switches both the meter and the tonality, and it gives it this really sweet, beautiful flavor. And I think this is something we should think about, maybe moving to minor a little bit. But I think we need to repeat this first. So there's something wrong with that loop down below, which we're going to fix in just a second. <clears throat> that tone is that whatever note that's playing. Maybe that one? That's better. repeat this so that we get a chance to grip onto it but we need to add something to it because you don't want to repeat exactly the same way That doesn't sound great right now, and it's too loud. But I think if we if we put it through some processing, we can make it sound good. So let's try that. I'm not sure it is, so we may end up just deleting it. But I think some subtle. We're gonna pull out my favorite little thing to do this with, which is outputs movement. And the nice thing is I have the Beyond 4.4 expansion for this, so we have five four ones. There's seven eight seven eight seven eight seven four seven four three four three four five eight. Okay, so here's where we're gonna be somewhere around here. Five four. So let's just grab a five four and see. Actually, 
And obviously we lost the reverb because I replaced it with this. So let me put some... We're actually going to use the built-in reverb for Logic because I really like some of the presets that they have. They're nice starting points for... Um, I forget that I shouldn't get rid of that. Um, they're warped effects. So these kind of really give you a really seriously mangled sound. So what does it sound like with both of those? Cool. Um, the other thing I think we could use is a little bit of delay, but that's going to have to happen before the reverb happens. So let's move this delay uh, right after movement. And let's turn off Hold on, Logic's freaking out because I moved a plug. <laughs> I moved a uh, an effect here. Whenever you move an effect, for some reason it gets real mad. There we go. Because it wants to update these. Uh, I think one. I want a simple filter. Let's just do a dotted resonate for now and see what it sounds like. Let's turn off the reverb. <laughs> I'm going to change that voice tone here. So I'm just going to change what, what the singer is singing and use a slightly different. It's going to be an O and it's going to be... I, I'm hoping to get rid of that um, excessive vibrato. <laughs> So we can't use movement if we do that because it's 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 kicking in too early. <laughs> That's a funny sound. So that wow. <laughs> so that's a little aggressive. Okay, so now I'll turn this on. We may not we may get rid of this delay. because I don't know if I want to mess with this so much. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. It's just super loud. I don't like the stir. the attack a little make the attack a little bit smoother she's off pitch at the beginning i think this is the attack way way over okay i like the sound designy aspects of that Achu. All right.
string or pads or something underneath this. fill it out it's out of balance at the moment but easy to fix after we record <laughs> We're just going to do these measure by measure. It's kind of tedious, but it keeps me from having to re-record a million times. Good. Easy peasy. And now we're going to have a sort of D. Yep. Starts on D. Yeah, that just fills it out a little. Join it all together. Make sure that it has modulation controller set to zero. Turn it down. And I think we're, we're gonna want something richer than this. Now the question is, do we want strings here? Let's try adding Chelly. rhythm and stuff so I'm um, listening to it and while I was playing it I think what I heard was so we definitely want no connection here these cannot connect and a little bit louder so we're gonna lean into this tone here probably not go back to the same volume we'll probably be a little bit higher when we get there we're probably gonna want to back load this and front load this Let's see what it sounds like good it's a little too aggressive still a little aggressive let's actually front load this I think we want this to have faded out almost because that leading tone there is weak. We'll push into this and we'll fade out like that. What do we have now? Yes, yes. Uh, and as far as uh, vibrato, yeah, da, 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 da. I don't think we want a lot of it. I think we want it to genu generally increase into here, decrease, sort of following the dynamics, basically. Except for I think we're going to keep it. Let's see what that sounds like. Good. That sounds good. Okay. Let's add some bases to that. Because I think we can just have our all our strings come in here. Actually, let's finish the cello line. Let's not get distracted here. This is still way too loud. That needs to sound like it's like in another country. Like the singer is in Iceland and we're just kind of hearing it across the ocean here. Yeah, that also kind of mitigates a lot of those, those slightly um, 
the start of the notes that I still don't like. Perfectly. And I can't go down to that note, so I'm going to have to go. Why is that letting me... can't really be letting me do that, right? That one is one. Yeah. The ATO. I didn't realize that ATO patch was polyphonic. Well, whatever. Okay. There we go. That was good. Oh, how's everybody doing this morning? I know we're streaming a little earlier today, which I didn't mention that I was going to do. Oh, I should have tweeted. So that starts way early. Let's just um, pull these all together so that we have consistent lines. Um, set all velocities to max. So by the time we get into this note, we need to dig into this note pretty fast. So probably and then we can sort of slow down here I actually we might want that to be a little bit and that's a good volume for that let's just bring it down just a little bit so that we have room to come up a little bit Yink, yink, yink. I'm feeling like those legatos are a little. We can actually slow these legatos down. These legatos are too fast. Wow. We're actually going to slow the legato down? I think here it's worth it. Yeah, that's better. Um, I think the reason is it's too, it's so, um, it's pretty high in the chills range. Or, well, it's pretty high of. It's not really high in the range. It's high. It's high for that B chord. But the problem is because the lowest note on your cello is a C, we're having to start on the the B that's an octave higher than where I would like to be. One thing I would like to see in virtual instruments is, hey, what if I had like five extra notes under the range of this instrument? Because um, you could do it. It wouldn't be pretty, and you wouldn't want to do it a lot. But cool. Let's add some basses to this. Let me just quantize the score so I know what I'm looking at without it being all gross. Okay, here we go. Oh, geez. Geez. Almost there. We're almost there. My garbage piano skills. So we're gonna get a low tone here out of these basses. You can't really hear it right now, but we are gonna get it. Let's keep them at this volume and see what happens. crescendo into this. I don't think this needs to have a lot of line. This is just supporting us. It's a nice steady foundation. I was working with some musicians the other day and they were, he's a cello player and a violin player and they were playing this um, really long stuff. These like pad things, you know. Um, uh, 
just like hello hero hamster how are you I was just telling them you're you're the ocean here you're the ocean that's what our bases are here it's the ocean underneath just supporting just copies because the more I work with aliases the more I hate them because it doesn't tie us as strictly as we would ex as I as as it could to the to the four so that when we switch time signatures here hopefully it's less jarring to suddenly have an extra beat in every measure 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 repeat the string part of this without the piano for a second. I don't think I'd be nice to not have it at all. Something like this. Yeah. What if we did like a... We'll do it with the correct <laughs> in time correctly, but let's let's just, just noodle around with some ideas here. Let's noodle. It's so fast. It's such a fast. to that. So that will clash with the, with the B chord, which is the last two beats of this measure. And let's do some dynamics here so that we're not And this needs to almost come from nothing. I mean, this is gonna. This would be a serious up bow, I think, in real life. Yeah. You know what? I'm just cheat. I'm gonna cheat. We were talking. The composing made simple the other podcast the other day about um, people who draw notes in on the. Piano roll, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. I say I'm cheating because I should be able to. I should be able to do it without, without that. But um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that style or technique. Um, but man, I would find that very tedious. 
we really want to lean into this. So almost like this, I think, right? And this note is too static, so we're, we're holding it on this. I'm really trying to be better about phrasing my strings. I, I sometimes it's it's just not it just needs to be there. Okay, so now we need to know what the second half of this phrase is. I think it's just walk up. Some of our velocities are... So in Hollywood Strings, velocity controls um, a significant amount of the transition length and volume. So if you, if you go from E to F with extremely high velocity, it chooses a much faster transition, but if you go very, very lightly. Right now my ATO strings are kind of too loud here. Um, if I mute them. You hear there's like a, so much more transition when the velocity is low. So you have to be really careful about your note velocities in Hollywood strings. Pay attention. <laughs> Oh, too much ADO. Sorry, I was I was moving the wrong fader. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some violin two stuff to that because I think it would be nice to have a little slightly. Let's try ba, 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 ba. Let's try that. And then here we can And what we're gonna do we've already done so much lovely work here in terms of Expression controllers and actually, oh, it uh, that I think. And my ATO violin, the violin's down here too loud. Um, let's so let's do this. Let's grab all. Let's grab. Let's grab this region. Go to Event Viewer. Copy all the expression data. Control C, go down here to our Veal V2 legatos, and just paste it right in here. Um, nice. And so, and then we just need to fix the velocities, which I actually don't want to be super high. This can have a little bit of, a little bit of slushiness here. Um, the other thing I was gonna do was take the Veal, the V2 Adagio down significantly so now we should have beautiful A little string choir if you are a composer who struggles with writing so I, I i was on the uh vi control forum earlier and uh there was a guy posting some stuff about how he's tried really hard bought a ton of libraries can't seem to get realistic strings I think a, a really good idea is to go find a choir to sing in, actually, because the nice thing about a human voice in terms of, like, how does it help us write strings is that it, uh, it like a string instrument, it's monophonic. You can only produce one tone at a time. You can't rely on these big block chords. And so you think of everything as a line when you're a singer. Everything begins and ends as a line. And so you, you, you end as you... Re read choral music you can see how you can stack lines on top of each other to make 
to make the string choir, and uh, I'm not by any means the best string writer in the world, but I think it does help me tremendously that I sing. I actually sing professionally here a little bit um, in town, and I consider, and I keep doing it even though it's kind of a d difficult schedule just because I think it helps with writing stuff like this. It really does to get out there. And I would encourage everybody who's composing to get out there and actually perform. It doesn't need to be orchestral music that you perform. You can perform... Why am I not hearing this all of a sudden? Oh, because I didn't select it. Um, sorry. Just a little bit of that. Um, very good, good idea to do that. It will very much help. What sounds muddy there all of a sudden? Really adding this note makes it sound muddy? Really? Really? Our violas are not going to play. It sounds fine with just the cello. This is a mistake I often make. I try to get all the strings in so I have the full string section playing, but um, especially when your cello part is moving this much, sometimes your violas just need to get out of the way. So, And that's just an idea underneath stuff. So what we have to do now is reinforce this this sort of synthy sound designy stuff. We have a melody now. <laughs> uh, a couple of melodies actually. So let's see if we can get some sound designy stuff some that sounds good here. Let's try that. so interesting to me because our first two chords are E A so the tone E should not make them but I think it's because there's too much happening there's just too much happening let's see if that maybe we can get away with no sound design stuff here This is the, um, who is that from? Hyperion, I think. Hyperion strings. Could we maybe, maybe, actually, maybe just this guy. We've already used him. I really like this, and it makes sense. I'm just really concerned about the texture, and I'm concerned about this. So the thing that needs to go away here, this is easy to fix, right? Right? It's that last C sharp. Why? Why are you over here? 
Okay, I'm going to slowly slide my finger. Okay. For some reason, this really gets, it loves to just, where's that last? Is it this? Yep. And same thing here. And you know what else would make this sound really good? subtonic. Let's repeat this because it's pretty. Because it's pretty. It is pretty, but we need to add stuff to it now. Can we just, okay, quick, quick sidebar. Can we just do, well, not there, but can we just do that? And actually, let's see if we can do something crazy here. Yeah, we're going to actually put the violas above both V1 and V2 here. It's okay. We'll fix that last note. I know where it needs to go. Oh, don't, don't do that. Actually, no, do do that. Do, do put those like that. This can't be a G. It has to be something in B. The nearest one is the leading tone, which I think isn't going to work. Let's try it. Good, it just don't, don't legato. It's so dangerous to have the leading tone up there. We're going to have to quiet it down. The leading tone is so powerful. Um, so what was I listening to the other day? I think it was just going... Oh, I see. It's just repeating Bach. Okay. Anyway, the leading tone is powerful. It's like the third of thirds. It's so, it's, um, you know, you could play all the A's on the piano. And one C sharp. And it becomes a chord, right? Even though there's one C sharp amidst this cloud of A's, it still builds a chord. Um, because thirds are so powerful. They're like a... They're like a spice, one of those spices that when you add too much, it really takes over the dish. That's what thirds are to chords. And uh, the leading tone being so powerful and it's wanting to move up to the tonic, when you hit a five chord, that is, it, it's even more powerful. And so ending on the leading tone in the viola here, which is way high, That can easily get out of hand, so we got to be real careful how we think about that. This is so fun. I really like having the violas above everything. Um, so, uh, by the way, uh, Curtis's not-so-useful-but-sometimes-helpful list of string techniques. Sometimes you can take one part of the string choir and put it above 
uh, something that it normally plays below and get a really interesting sound because the tone color is so different. So the popular and most um, used version of this is um, building a chord with your basses and your violas, say the root and the third. Um, so you could have your basses play um, here. And you could have your um, violas play here. And you've got a chord, right? And then you, what you do is you take your cello and you play it way up here. And it sounds beautiful to have the cello really hide its register because this note, G above middle C, is um, it's very powerful uh, in a, a very high, excuse me, not powerful. It's very high in the cello's range, high-ish. And so it has that really, that really strident, um, not pinched, but really passionate, a passionata quality up there. Uh, whereas when you play this on a violin, it's kind of, you know, it's on like the second string or, you know, third or second string, depending on your position in it. And it, eh, you know. So these can't be static. They have to build, but not too much. I should ne I don't do this either, but never let a long note like this just hold on one volume. And what we're going to do is we're just going to quiet that down like this. We're going to bring this up like this. We're going to actually backload this volume here. Do you see how that, like, like that's literally, uh, what, half the volume? Almost half the volume, and it works because bleeding tones. Powerful spice. Powerful spice. So it's so um, it's got so much energy up there because the viola normally does not play up there. So be aware of the ranges of your instruments. because of the, I've put too much vibrato in it. Let's bring the vibrato down significantly. Either that or my ATO strings have forgotten their chant, their expression and velocity, con or uh, expression controllers, I'm not sure. Well, what if the piano continues with us here? What happens? <laughs> This 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 pad will keep us sort of in that sound design place while having these lush romantic E strings here. in that sound design place from a texture standpoint. And 
so we've now definitely heard that enough. So I think now is when we could maybe make that change that we were talking about earlier to maybe a more, more minor feel. The question is, do we want to repeat the, do we want to go back to 4-4 four, four and do some more opening, um, just restating it so that we understand that it's a valuable part of our organization here. Um, I think the part we'd want to repeat is probably, probably got to split this one on, let's listen. Where, what do we want to repeat here from the opening? across that bar line. It doesn't need to, though. Uh, we can split it. I think we can split that without there being vast problems. Let's find out. Oh, no. That does create vast problems. We'll just cut this and split it ourselves over here. So we go from this string thing. Let's see if it sounds right. back but not all the way back there was one problem I noticed here yeah that the end of that is too short um and it's because of this crescendos too fast and early I think if we did this much better I feel like every update of Logic changes how paste works. Logic is a good program, by the way. I know I complain about it a lot, but it's but it's the people who work on it are obviously, obviously, very knowledgeable. Not just about the technical side, but about the artistic side. to load all of the tracks. Um, A, they're not all loaded on this machine. Uh, so I'm using Vienna Ensemble Pro, which I'm going to praise the beach ball, which is our little term here for saving. Um, so there are two other computers. Um, the first is just another iMac, so my older iMac. Um, and what they do is they sit with a server program open, um, and they are actually the ones who load the samples. So um, they all live, so some of them live over here, some of them live on a PC I have over here, um, and then it connects to that server software. So what happens is when I trigger a note over here, for example, this Bose, like a middle C, uh, it sends the MIDI data from the computer you can see to the iMac you can't see. It renders the sample and sends the audio back over the network so that you're splitting up the the stuff there are some samples i have loaded here locally the spitfire choir is loaded locally right now if it's even loaded it's not uh when i load spitfire samples i usually load them locally um but uh, everything else is 
spread across multiple machines. I actually think we can afford to lose velocity here too. We're not using a lot of tracks right now. Vienna, it's a cool. It's cool. It allows you to kind of use other hardware to spread it out. Ideally, I would have like five or six servers that just render samples, but that would be expensive. It also more logically, I think, it just gives you, you know, a, when a machine has only one thing to do at a time, that's helpful. You know, when it's only responsible for hosting samples, it's not hosting samples and trying to be a DAW, that's helpful. Well, thank you. I appreciate your kind words. We're trying to make something good. Speaking of Spitfire. Speaking of Spitfire, let's load some Spitfire choirs. We're going to load an Evo patch because they're lovely. This is what the Vienna plugin looks like, by the way. This is what I see on mine. So this isn't connected because I just, it's, it's not connected. We're going to load the Spitfire stuff locally here. Uh, we're going to change the name of this track, too, to... Um, let's go with the, start with a 2T preset so that we don't have to worry about men versus women. Let's start with just dynamic movements and see what we get. Crank that reverb. Um, and actually, I'm going to put more reverb on it. I like to use the Spitfire built-in reverb, like a little bit less of it, maybe 30%, and then send it through a different reverb that's... Um, Like spaces, for example. Um, so, what, what does this sound like? Why is this on minor? There we go. Bart. Yeah, I'm trying to be real, real like a taskmaster, get myself on every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so. Let's try this. The F sharp is so much louder. It's okay, we're going to make this into a super choir pad, not a... Uh, it depends on the terraria tune, Bart. I don't know. Uh, I'd have to look and see like how hard it is. And, it, and I'm not sure what the style is. I, honestly, when we were doing Starbound... Uh, by the way, Bart, we worked with me on Starbound. Um... Uh, on the programming side of things. Uh, we were doing Starbound. I deliberately, because there was so much of that, like, Starbound is just Terraria um, stuff that I deliberately didn't listen to its score. Um, so I'm not super familiar with it either. So I'm not saying I'm going to be uncomfortable. I just don't know. I can't, I can't say. I'll ha I'd have to look at it. Yeah, I, I, I stayed miles away from Terraria as much as possible during Starbound's development because of all that. Ex 
Exactly. Exactly. I think both Starbound and Terraria, from what I understand, are a lot more like Minecraft than they are like each other, but... Yeah, from a Terraria perspective, um, I would be totally happy, like, arranging a Terraria tune if, you know, depending on how close you want it to be, it could be harder for me. If I'm just arranging it, I can, it's usually a little bit easier. I want this really thin sound. So we need to we need to not make that pump the volume so much. I love that little saxophone thing that's happening on the uh, arcade. Yeah, yeah. Just I'd have to look at it and see. If it's real synthy, um, I would probably have a harder time with it. I have a, sometimes have a hard time with the like eight bitty thing, just because I'm not of that world. It's a very specialized um, sort of style. So depending on how electronic it is. It just depends. I'd have to try it to see. Sometimes things that are really far away from what I'm used to, I get into them and I'm like, oh, okay, I get this and it's great. And then sometimes, sometimes I'm just fighting it and I don't know all the tricks. out of the woodwinds, I guess. Movement. I'm putting this on all the woodwinds, this this uh, movement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a subtle one. So it's nice to have the, the little presets. And sometimes you can just, I mean, oftentimes you can just use them. I like this tilt shift sunset one. We can do something up here with the flute. I like this like weird like Americana pastoral sound in the middle and then we go back to the sound design. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's see what we can do with this. Put some ridiculous reverb on it. of the movement 
Um, I think I'm going to we'll go back to the where's my okay cool yay for me. Let's move this a little. Something like that. That's a nice sound. Let's see if it works. Yes, please. Okay, and then here we need to change. And obviously, volume, it's coming. We're going to change, fix that. Oh, I wasn't recording. Ha <laughs> ha. wasn't quite what I did last time. Uh, let's redo it. here on this on this 53 we're gonna fix the there's some serious uh some of these get just a little bit high on velocity. It should be just really gently in the back. Yeah, yeah. Just hootie winds up at the top. Again, the singer is in Iceland. The winds are maybe in in like Siberia. They're just like way far away. They're, they're as far away sounding as we can make it. This, this Evo needs to come down. too much but I don't care fight me
I was just complaining about an album that I thought was a little too sound designy and not enough melody and not doing the exact same thing, but whatever. <sighs> whatever. I think a long filtered, like one quarter, yeah. One quarter. Ah, go away. Don't want to see you right now. Thanks. Let's see if this sounds good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just to make it a little bit more. And we're going to do the same. Actually, hold on just a second. Let me copy a plug in here, which causes always causes logic so much fun. Okay. From the strings. taking every ounce of my will not to put a mark tree there, but I'm not going to do it. We've been using it too much. good we just need to have that d sharp actually sound here and maybe we can do some more wins over this we had about the leading tone earlier. Same problem as with the D-sharp earlier. It's a measure late. And this is too loud. Maybe here. Phrasing and not a lot of it, just like this. It's pretty much like a 
when you put all this crap on the winds, it kind of turns them into a pad. Let's have no brass in this piece. A little interlude, I think, is how I'm feeling this section. Feels like we needed something new to kind of... What if we did something like this? Actually, I go with that. With that Hans there. Square broken in this too? No, it's not. So remember how I don't know if you were here for the for this uh, discussion on the long piece that these weren't. Let's just have them double the um, the alto flute. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, Obviously, they are too loud, he said, for the hundred thousandth time on stream. Can we add any of this stuff in? These are some loops I made. so you can see what I'm doing. So this is a loop I made since C sharp minor. What about this one? I obviously used a, one of their presets to start. And let's put it in a bigger space. Wow, it's in a church already. Wow, really? Let's put a six second reverb on it. What does it sound like? Where? <laughs> it's gonna mess up earlier. I forgot that I had that for a reason. It's okay. Yeah, it's not gonna work because it's not. This uses that D major chord that's not in C sharp minor. Um, five eight again. Let's go, let's listen to that five eight section again. Just make sure. We what if we pulled this down quite a bit? Thank 
like the clarinet sounds good, but it sounds lonely. If we just did this, would it fix a lot of those problems? Let's find out today on Man, today is good for just like trying stuff out. Like every time I've tried something today, I've got I've it's works. That's good. straight then into this. Let's try just to see. I'm not even going to change the um not even going to change the key signature. I'm just or time signature. I'm just going to put it there and let it play it for me and just see what it sounds like to go there. Cuz I'm not really sure. with some transition ideas to to knit it together it will work so we need to change our time signature to five four here I don't know if this is going to work, but I think it could work, and it might keep that sound design style. may cause some weirdness. I just want to listen to the wind strips. Some tree verb. It's delicate and lovely. The reverb is a little, little much up there, but... all together. Let's praise the beach ball, though. <sighs> By the way, the Vienna is why it takes like 800 years to save, because I have it set so that I don't have to worry about saving a separate file on each of the Vienna instances to remember my instruments. I just have it set to save that in the project file, so it takes it a lot to go and just make sure those are all the same.
make some adjustments to this Bose. It's just a little bit hot the whole time. I tend to mix my pianos too hot in the template, so. detail in that heart loop a lot better without losing the line now that one arcade I think it's this one yeah I feel like my strings just need more reverb on them to really match everything. Just a little bit more. I want to try putting them in a different space, so give me just a second. Let's put them in the Hamburg Cathedral. recording yesterday of a what was the piece it was a William Byrd mass for me and I could not believe the size of the space these singers were in it was huge it was enormous and it made me feel a lot better about sometimes I feel like I lean on too much reverb too often and that things get too wet in a lot of my um, work but this was was easily double the amount of what I would ever put on, <laughs> on it, so... Now vocalize is too loud, that's okay, it's easy to fix. So let's go back to 41. We're very much using this as a pad here. Sorry, we have to go back here to trigger out the sample.
is so good. not used any suspended symbol. We're going to use one little one here. Obviously earlier. <laughs> Let's do that in the correct that it actually so where we're wanting this to hit is at 73 okay so like maybe here at 73 let's see what happens And we need to go somewhere then. I'm going to be on for about 15 more minutes. So let's see if we can get somewhere good in 15 minutes here. We might be able to finish the piece. I mean, we're at 3.04. <laughs> in high school they used that melody. Except for it wasn't in five. Should we use it again? Close, close, close. It sounds good in five. I actually really like it. So it would actually be right he here. So we'd go. Oh no, it wouldn't. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It would be here. Oh no, no! Move all of it! <laughs> Just turn that reverb on the string sound. Just, uh... still holding vox pad or no it's um I 
like it. That's nice. I think it stays in five. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. Let's just fix this here. Double on the felt. So I do not like felt piano. I've decided that I no longer just like just felt piano. It's too it's too mushy. It's too schleppy. No, it's too mushy. It's too by itself, especially the low registers. It's beautiful. It's got the intimate quality, especially, but all the intim like not all of it. A lot of the intimacy from a felted piano comes in the post attack. Thing. So if you just double it on the Bosey, I feel like you get the beautiful Bosey attack, but then the felt sort of tone. like so don't copy and we put it in back in four got a lot of five fives and fours in this one it's cool I like it let's do this um, let's have the velocity on this just like fall off a cliff. <laughs> and what we can do is we can extend this one measure. We can grab it sustain pedal controller and just move that over on both of them. Show me the sustain controller. Oh, we're almost done. We're almost out. I'm almost done for the day. We're almost there. We've got about nine minutes of streaming left. Except for the fact that there's brrrr at the end there.
perfect. Um, the only thing is right here, starting here and going to here, we want to have a writ, but we want it to return to the regular tempo there. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this, these, just here to there, and we're going to say, um, let's make sure we got the right region selected. Yes, that is right. Um, tempo operations. We're going to slow down just a little tiny bit. We're not going to continue with new tempo. So we have that. I like to use this here because I like it returns. I find I fight it less. We've got a piece of music, f fellers. Not to be exclusionary, but we have a piece of music, everyone. piano stuff hang longer that should be good from the beginning let's listen to the whole the whole thing all the way through I'll put the score up on the screen so you can see what the score looks like too in case you're interested it's going to be a lot of whole notes because there's a lot of, I'm using a lot of bespoke loops through um, arcade and some ones that are just presets in arcade too. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of just whole notes, but you at least get the piano parts up here. up there. Thank you. 
marginess hit. the way this theme just comes in twice at the end it's like under not developed the entire time just like suddenly here i kind of like it actually Perfect. I like the little ka-chunk. You can hear the pedal come up. It's nice. All right. So that was done. And we are done because it is 11.15 my time. We've been on for precisely two hours, uh, which is all I really have time for today. i got to do some work here before i got to leave in an hour that I can't do on stream. So I'm going to go do that. It's been real. Thank you for stopping by. We will um, see what happens to this piece. I'm not sure. We probably this one's royalty freeable, so we'll probably put it up on some Audio Jungle Pond Five-ish sort of places for licensing. If you'd like to use it in a game, film, etc., YouTube video, you can get a license. Probably get that up in the next week or so. Um, I have an entire album that has just been sitting on my drive, unreleased because I have been too busy to get um, art done for it. I'm trying to find it here, sorry. Um, it was originally called Autumn 2018 Album. Right now it's 18 tracks. I think maybe this will be 19 tracks. We'll put it maybe... Actually, I'll probably put it in somewhere in here. There's or replace one of these. One of these tracks I don't love. I think maybe we'll replace like On 3. No, I like On 3. Maybe Ghost Machine... I don't know. There's a lot of tracks on this album, so I actually like this. Yeah, maybe that one. Maybe Embers. No, I like Embers. So anyway, there's a couple in here that I I don't love. This one I don't love. But it's I don't know. We might just throw it in here somewhere. And eventually I'll actually release this album one day. It's probably going to be like January because I have to submit it. If I want it to hit stores at the right times, I have to submit it like a month before. So it can be a little bit crazy. I s also, there's some volume issues on a few of these. So we'll see. I'll get that out soon. Probably put this one on it. Let's praise the beach ball one last time. And I will see everyone... I believe on Friday. What is my schedule on Friday? What is my schedule on Friday? Hold on. Let me look at my schedule and make sure. Um. On Friday, I am gone in the afternoon, so I will have to stream in the morning. Um, let's plan for a Friday morning stream, much like the one we had today, maybe two or three hours, nothing crazy, but I will try. I, I am really trying to, as I told Bart, we in the chat earlier, really trying to be set on a schedule of at least getting a stream of two or more hours in on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, just so that I've, 
I've I've really been consistent. So um, the schedule, the actual hours where I do it are a little variable. Sometimes it's in the morning, sometimes it's in the afternoon. But um, but yeah, that's kind of what I've been attempting to do. So um, we'll see if we can make the hours. Now that we've got the days pretty, um, <laughs> now that we've got the days pretty uh, stable, I think that um, we should be able to start stabilizing the hours. Also, right now I'm in the middle of helping some people out with a large production which premieres at the end of the month. So once that's done, once I'm done helping them, the schedule should settle down a little bit. All right, everybody, it's been wonderful. Have a lovely rest of the day, evening, night, week, month, whatever it is where you are, whatever time it is, whatever, whatever. And we will see you on Friday morning. Bye.